14 cacti and other succulents plants for your landscape. Moss roses Portulaca grandiflora are small annual succulents with small rose-like flowers that appear on mats of fine textured fleshy leaves. Portulacas grow from 3 to 9 inches high and flower throughout the growing season and readily self-seed in the garden. The flowers are neon bright shades of white, purple, yellow, orange and white, the blooms close up during cloudy, rainy weather. Hen and Chicks, Sempervivum tectorum, is a mat-forming perennial succulent that produces clusters of rosettes. The parent rosettes are the hens, and the smaller rosettes that spring from them are the chicks. This low-growing, 4 inches tall, perennial will quickly spread to 2 feet or more in width. Although grown for its leaves, the hen and chicks plant does flower in June and July with reddish-purple blooms. The plant is best grown in USDA hardiness zones 3 to 8, Prickly pear cactus, Apuntia compressa, is one of few cactuses that do well in cold climates. Prickly pear grows well in zones 4 to 9. It grows to about 1 foot in height with clumping pad-shaped stem segments that are sometimes mistaken for leaves. Sharp spines and tufts of hair cover the pads. Bright yellow flowers 2 to 3 inches in diameter appear in June and July. The plant also produces edible red fruit. Related to the prickly pine, the chala cacti are a group of intimidating plants that are densely covered with very sharp spines. These are not plants for the faint of heart, or for families where there are children or inquisitive pets. They can make very interesting specimen plants in the right garden, however. There are species ranging from low clumping ground covers to upright plants growing 6 feet or more. A few of the species can be quite cold hardy, surviving down to minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Some types of barrel cactus plants are popular as houseplants. But for some of us, houseplants are the furthest thing from our minds when mention is made of barrel cactus. If you watched westerns as a kid, you probably recall seeing a thirsty cowboy slice off the top of a barrel cactus to get at the liquid stored inside. It's not just fiction, some species of echinocactus barrel cacti do contain a reasonably palatable fluid, or so we're told, that is potable in an emergency. An imposing plant, the saguaro cactus, Carnegie giganea, is an enduring symbol of Route 66 and the American West. It is native to the Sonoran Desert of Arizona and California. This cactus may be too large for most yards, but, with sufficient space, this giant is an impressive addition. Also known as stone crops, sedums represent a large group of perennial succulents that can be grown in many environments, not just arid conditions. This form, Sedum spectable, Autumn Joy, is one of the larger types, growing to 24 inches. Unlike many succulents, Autumn Joy is very much grown for its flowers, which appear in clusters of tiny red or purple flowers that appear in September and October. Sedum erythrosticum, Frosty Morn, like several other sedums, has variegated leaves. The name of this perennial sedum cultivar refers to the white tinges on its otherwise green leaves. Frosty Morn is grown primarily for its foliage. It grows up to one foot tall and produces white or pale pink flowers in September and October. Frosty Morn is suitable for growing in USDA hardiness zones 3 to 9. It is an excellent low-maintenance plant. The gold flowers that emerge in spring on Angelina sedum can be a nice bonus added to the appeal of its chartreuse foliage, as long as you don't mind the rather gangly stems they bloom on. But for many, the chartreuse foliage of these succulents is the main reason to grow them. Mass the plants together for use as a ground cover or short perennial border. It is suitable for use in USDA hardiness zones 5 to 8. With a common name like Dragon's Blood, one expects a lot of color out of this sedum. But how many colors you get depends on the amount of sunshine you give it, among other factors. The sedum spireum, dragon's blood, is a mat-forming sedum that grows to 6 inches and produces pink-red flowers in June and July. Other cultivars include, bronze carpet, which has bronze foliage and pink flowers, fuldigut, which has reddish foliage and scarlet flowers, and tricolor, which has leaves with pinkish-white margins. Ice plant, Delesperma cooperi, is a somewhat more tender perennial succulent, suitable for growing in USDA hardiness zone 6 to 10. 
It is a spreading evergreen succulent that grows to 3 to 6 inches in height. Glossy red-purple flowers appear in June to September. The common name, ice plant, derives from an optical illusion caused by the way light bounces off tiny hairs on the surface of the plant's leaves. Yuccas are a large genus of perennial plants, shrubs, and trees known for their spiky, sword-like leaves. Large forms can grow to 8 feet in height, but dwarf forms can make excellent landscape plants. Yucca Haramania x nana grows to only about 1 foot high and produces spikes of creamy white flowers. Yucca filamentosa, commonly known as Adam's needle, grows to 2 to 3 feet and produces white flowers in early summer. Joshua tree, Yucca brevifolia, is another form of yucca. The plant was named by Mormon pioneers, probably in reference to the Book of Joshua in the Old Testament, 818-29. The passage states that a Hebrew army, wielding javelins, on an order from God to, stretch out the javelin that is in your hand, took the city of Ai and, raised over it a great heap of stones. The name likely derives from the stony landscape of the Mojave as well as the tree's outstretched arms and javelin-tip leaves. The species in the agave genus are plants that form thick pointed leaves arranged in a rosette pattern. The leaves usually end in a spine, which sometimes causes these plants to be considered cacti. These are not cacti, though, but another type of succulent. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more interesting videos. And please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm.